Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I am here with the Doodlebug Down on the Farm 6x6 paper pad. I'm going to be making 34 cards and almost all of the cards are made twice because there are two pieces of each of the pattern papers from the collection. So I'll only show you making a smaller portion of cards because I will make two of everything. I also decided to bring in some black mats around things this time, a couple of reasons. People have suggested doing it before, they think it adds a lot to it, and I have to agree that it certainly can. Um, it does take up a bit more resources, although you could of course. So there I put the uh, pattern paper uh, on top of a black mat, and that means that all that black paper is being used, or black cardstock actually, is being used even though most of it's covered up. So if that's a concern for you, I would recommend die cutting a shape, a basic shape, like a rectangle out of the center. I love cat scrappiness dies for that. Great price point, lots of fun. Um, so they're all like basic shapes, but they have lots of fun details like the wonky stitched or the scalp stitched. But what I'm doing is making a two size cards and the black mat on all of them is five and a quarter by four. Yeah, it sounds right. And then the um, patterned piece is a quarter inch shorter on both sides. So it goes from five and a quarter by four to five by four and three quarters. I think I got that all right. But there will be a coordinating blog post and I'll put more of those kind of details in the coordinating blog post. This video is mostly kind of just intended to show you the cards. Although again, you could see those in the coordinating blog post, there'll be still photos of all of the cards and for me to kind of just talk through my process and what sort of decisions I made and why I made them. The other reason that I used black mats, Doodlebug recently switch to smaller cut apart images. They used to be about like nine on a page and now they're about 12 on a page. So they are very small. They're like not even two by three. I think they're like one and a half by two and a half. Again, I, I should probably just have the measurements with me, but they're tiny little cut apart images and they don't really visually hold their weight on the card. So I made black mats for them and I started by just putting like, you know, cutting all the little cut aparts apart because you know, they're on one piece of paper and matting them on black. And that time I did half an inch bigger instead of a quarter inch bigger so that again, they were more substantial. They held enough weight to be the focal point of a card. And as I go through the cards, I when I started, I was doing a lot of simple decisions to kind of get me going. And I've talked about this before. I will make some easy cards to start with. And what I mean by that is just like going with the first ideas that come to my head, making them happen, and then going from there. So what that entailed this time was there was a cut apart cow. I paired it with the cow paper. There was a cut apart horse. I paired it with the horse paper. There was a cut apart barn. I paired it with the barnyard paper, like ones that just kind of obviously went together in my head. When cutting apart the papers, I'm making a lot of scraps, of course. And I am trying to use those up as often as possible. So if I have scraps from one card or like scraps from cutting a piece of paper, I'll either try to use it on the card that I am currently creating or the next card. And one of the reasons for that is just so that I don't wind up with a giant pile of scraps at the end. I mean, I still will have a pile of scraps at the end, but that I, when I get towards the end, I'm not just looking at lots of little tiny pieces that could have been better incorporated onto cards. So like these little paper strips with the crisscross pattern, it's the opposite side of the blue that I'm using. And they are going to coordinate perfectly because that's what Doodlebug does. Is they make all their papers coordinate for you so that you don't have to think so much about patterns. But particularly if a card or sorry, if a paper is printed on one side, the opposite side will coordinate really easily. Even if like say this blue paper doesn't coordinate as well with the horse paper, it will definitely coordinate with its flip side. And so that takes a lot of the guesswork out of figuring out what matches or goes well together. 
I'm also using a lot of foam tape today just to add a bit of dimension since the cards can be a little bit more simple. I'm not coloring any images. I'm using their images a lot. And that's how part of the reason I was able to get so many cards out of it. Um, I did, however, notice there was no sentiments this time. So I did pull in the Lawn Fawn Critters on the Farm, I believe it is, for the Hey There sentiment. And I just use that one a lot because it suits the kind of cards I make. I donate a lot of my cards. They're very, you know, for... Um, organizations that are just sending encouraging cards. So it doesn't need to be um, like a birthday or thank you or anything specific. It just needs to be like a general hello, cheer them up kind of card. So hey there is perfect. And if you saw uh, my recent video where I worked with the Scrappin' for Less farm countryside kit, I came up with some farm jokes so that you could print and put inside of cards. So I'm going to link you to that again today. I'm going to donate a lot of these cards, not all of them, but you know, usually not all of them. I usually send a few, but, or, or sometimes I will send a few to specific kids like that. I've joined a Facebook group and they, you know, they give out specific addresses. Um, but anyway, I'm going to include the farm jokes from my site in the cards. And that takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. It's, it's an encouraging message automatically uh, because it's a joke so it brightens their day and it even includes a little message at the end so you can print them off put them inside the card sign your name and be done you can of course add a personal message and that would be great and I encourage you to but I just wanted to kind of help people have fun with card making by giving them a purpose and um, so yeah there'll be a link in the video description for you to get those jokes and to get resources and I know that I'm not talking a ton about what I'm doing with the cards and I'm talking about some other stuff too, but I think that you can kind of tell what I'm doing, especially just by looking at them. They are not the most complicated. I am also trying to use up some twine. This is something that I like to do with these videos a lot. If you've seen my other six by six paper pad tutorials, and I have a lot on Doodlebug, but I've also started trying to incorporate other companies. Um, I have like two that are from big box stores. I'm trying to do that more too, so that you know, different, you can get them. There are different sources, different companies, etc. So I like to try to use up some supplies that I've held on to for years. Like, I don't know about you, I have a massive amount of ribbon and twine. And so those are one thing that I like to use up a lot in these videos. And so I'm pulling in um, like a bunch of black and white twine because it coordinates really well. And I know that that will probably eventually get used, but I'm also kind of thinking, why not just go for it? You know, why not just use it up? If I really am like, hey, I, I, I'm missing my black and white twine, I can get more. There's always more. So that's kind of my philosophy there. And again, here I'm using the scrap. So I'd cut out the flower paper. I had extra bits of it. And so the other side is going to coordinate perfectly. I'm going to use it right away. You can use them easily as strips across the paper and also as banners. Those are kind of like the, um, I don't want to say obvious, but like the easiest, I guess is the word for it, things to do is to use them very simply. And so what I like to do a lot with the scraps is just kind of pull them up to help ground or anchor my focal image. And I've been doing that in a variety of ways. I've been doing it with small rectangles on that last card. I've been doing it with strips of paper across the center or across the bottom, things like that. Like I'm basically using the scraps to create things to offset, off, sorry, offset these focal images that are coming from the six by six paper pad. These all these little rectangles are right there in the pad. And so you can make a lot of these cards with nothing more than the paper pad, some black cardstock, and some kind of sentiment stamp. Although again, you don't have to have a sentiment. So you could just, you know, do something on the inside of the cards. I don't even think you need that. And I know some people had asked about um like incorporating stamp sets. And I think you certainly could. You know, if you have a farm stamp set, color them up and use them in place of these stickers. So I chose to get the Doodlebug stickers. And one of the reasons that I decided to do that, and I've done it in a few videos and will do it in more videos, is because part of the point is to show people that you don't have to have a ton of supplies to make 
adorable cards and have fun card making. You don't have to have beautiful Copic coloring to make cards that will be really loved and appreciated. And some people find those processes fun and some people find them stressful. So I want to make sure that I kind of like show a variety of things on my channel. With that in mind, I'm using the stickers and these are the mini icon stickers and I'm incorporating them onto some of the cut aparts, but then I'll be using some independently as well. And here I'm just going through and kind of completing any of them that I felt weren't essentially like full. So there are these two cut aparts that are like journaling spots essentially. Like there's room to write on them. And that's great in the larger 12 by 12 size because these are just the the 6 by 6 pad is just the 12 by 12 shrunken down. So if you're a scrapbooker, those big pieces to journal on are great. I used to love them when I scrapbooked, but now to me they're like a spot for a sentiment on the card or a spot for a focal image, but they don't have one, so I have to add that. And so what I'm doing is stamping on it and then adding my stickers. Like I just said, you could just add stamped and colored in images instead if that's more what suits you. But the sticker sheet is like $3. So again, you know, showing you that you could start making cards and having fun with them pretty cheaply rather than investing in a stamp set, investing in markers, watercolors, etc., to color those all in. And as I'm using the sticker sheet, another tip that is, is kind, of, kind of silly, but is to use the tiny stickers. And I say that because I think when I first did a lot of card making, scrapbooking, whatever, um, I was always stuck like always you know I used up all the big stickers from a set and I never used all the little ones and it's not that they wouldn't have gone well on my project it's just that um, I didn't quite see them so like now I make a point to use them and I make a point to see like oh where could I incorporate these little tiny stickers so they're not just left over at the end of the pack and so then I'm doing things like adding the little flies around the pig or I added the little flowers around the goat here again, I'm kind of doing one of the more like um, simple or clear things. I paired the chicken cut apart with the chicken paper. I also like besides this being the clear thing to do, it also makes sense. Like putting a horse on, t you know, a horse focal image on the chicken paper might look a little weird. And also the chicken, the colors of the chicken cut apart are going to go well with the chicken paper. So you don't need to think too much about it. And I don't know if you can tell, but the background of that chicken cut apart, there's like a green pattern behind those chickens on the fence. Well, that was a piece of pattern paper in the set. So I took that piece of pattern paper scrap, I die cut it with a circle, and I incorporated it. They, you know, Doodlebug has done the work for me of trying to figure out what coordinates. So I'm just going to go with it. And I um, used, I cut a whole circle, cut it in half so that I could use it on both cards and get more out of a single scrap. Also, I don't know if you noticed what I've been doing is I've been taping all of this ribbon down with just scotch tape and it's not even ribbon twine. And I find that to be quite a simple way to attach it. Now, not all scotch tape is archival safe, but, you know, again, these cards are going to be enjoyed for a few months, maybe held on to for a few years, but they don't need to survive hundreds of years. They don't need to be archival. So a little bit of scotch tape can be very helpful. And so then what I did is I just tacked down the scotch tape or sc tacked down the twine with scotch tape on the front and then I covered it with my, you know, my little focal panel my little uh, chicken there. And so that made it sit nicely without a lot of work, uh, without a lot of fussing with anything. So here I have this pretty busy background paper and I got a little bold and used some busy paper on top of some busy paper. I wouldn't always suggest, and I know some people don't like it, but I think that it kind of works with Doodlebug pads because again they're meant to coordinate with each other so even though it might I don't know if you wanted to tone it down if you don't like the pattern on pattern look 
then you can put the black mat around the pattern. And that helps to visually break it up quite a bit. And so that that's my general recommendation if you don't like the pattern on pattern. If you put a little layer of black in between, you'll probably like it a lot better. And um, I'm at the point in the paper pad where I'm starting to focus a little bit more on scraps and not so much on whole pieces because you know, there's only so many papers in the pad and each paper can turn about out about one card sized piece. You know, you, you it if you were to get two big chunks out of the six by six pattern paper, they wouldn't quite fully cover a card, which is not a bad thing, but um, it starts you start to having to use scraps and kind of piecing them together to create a bigger, more complete picture. So this red bandana paper, I had uh, originally decided to cut it into fours because I thought it would go with a lot of things. It was a relatively simple paper and therefore it would be a fun one to have some big chunks of. So rather than cutting every single paper into a card size panel, I'd usually try to pick out a few, even if it's just one because you'll have two pieces and then, you know, get double, um, to create three by three pieces because they're pretty substantial and they can be a large element on a card so that's what I did there also the back of that pattern paper were these jean pockets which were kind of cute in theory but I just could not figure out how to use them on a card in a way that I found pleasing so I'll take that three by three chunk with this other little chunk of pattern paper that was left as a scrap and kind of just pattern or sorry, piece them together in a way that is pleasing. And as you can see, I do tend to sort of like mess around with it um, in terms of playing with them on the card base before I glue everything down just to make sure that I like it. I also always recommend using a thicker, higher quality cardstock when you are leaving a lot of white space. So if there's not going to be a lot of pattern paper or layers or whatever to kind of um, make the card be a little bit more substantial and heavy, having that thick cardstock really matters. I use thick cardstock for all the cards that I make them. I noticed, interestingly, that there was no sheep to go with the sheep paper. And so I'm just using one of the other farm scenes. And again, just pulling in those scraps. As you can see, there's not anything fancy. I mean, it's basically gluing scraps to paper there. But, you know, trying to do things that make them pleasing. So things that make them generally more pleasing to the eye is sets of odds. So like pairing three things. So I have two strips and a focal panel there, for instance. Or... um, and I, I do that a lot. If you notice, there was like two banner strips on another one with the focal image that being in those odds, but also them overlapping is very visually appealing rather than them being like just next to each other. Although you can do that sometimes, of course, too. But just like if they're overlapping and kind of creating a cluster, they're helping to draw your attention to the focal image. So that's, you know, some tips for including them. Make them banners, make them strips. Even if they're not strips that cover the whole thing, make sure there's a group of odds. So like maybe two strips with your focal image and um, making sure that you sort of overlap things and they're not in different parts of the card, a little bit more spread out, kind of group things together. Next up, I looked at this bandana paper that you can cut apart, and I thought that would be another way to create these focal points for my image. So again, I did put them on black cardstock. I gave them that quarter inch mat, which is a little bit thicker, so it's a quarter inch on each side, and therefore half an inch bigger when you cut it. And I decided to use these big strips of pattern paper and pair them with these squares so the pink square went well with that sort of teal blue paper and then the brown square went well with this green paper so I just took a sticker and put it in the center of each one and made some very simple cards with the strip of pattern paper on one side and the focal image again overlapping it but also overlapping the white space to kind of keep drawing your attention away and um that worked out pretty well for them. I also had some green ones that I had cut up and 
I again started looking at how to make the patterns work in an interesting way. So here I'm breaking the rule that I just told you because I told you to do an odd number of them and here I'm about to do an even number essentially because there's going to be three strips and then my little focal point cow image. So none of the rules are hard and fast, but what was interesting here and what kind of made this a fun card and made it work easily is that the strips got progressively smaller and that drew your eye to the focal image, which was the cow. So that was kind of the, the design logic there is that your eye is visually going to go towards what is getting smaller. And I decided not to cut up all of those pieces just because I knew I wasn't going to be able to make a whole bunch more cards at this point just kind of knowing what scraps were left so I didn't cut them all into little squares I kept some as a big chunk and I thought that would also look interesting on a card because I could put a sentiment and different stickers to fill in the little chunks kind of like a quilt essentially like they're all like little quilt blocks and I could create a little scene inside different ones to make a visual scene there and this also the other reason I chose to do this is because it allowed me to use a whole bunch of my stickers. And that mud is a good example of what I was talking about. I could have just put the pig there and it would have looked really cute, but then I would have had a mud puddle sticker left and no logical reason for it. So that's why I made sure to like, I kind of go back and go, okay, is there any little accessories I could put with this pig, even though he's cute by himself, so that those stickers get used up. I'm just going to kind of keep working with those um, bandana pieces that I cut apart until they're all used up and until I've used up as many cards as possible. I noticed there was that, I guess it's a mint color, that bluish greenish color. That mint color and the yellow, I could see those colors in that sheep paper. So I use it as an inspiration and I pulled in the sheep sticker and the yellow hay bale to again pull that yellow a little bit more in because there's only a touch of yellow in the sheet paper and it also made the hay there sentiment make a little bit more sense. So I usually kind of like to pause and evaluate what scraps I have left, what you know different things there are. Um, I Off to the side there, there was, uh, there was a sheep. I remember it now. But I think it says I like you and or something or I love you. And I just didn't think that that suited my purposes well because I wouldn't be saying I love you to a stranger. So, you know, like, I mean, they're, you know, because I don't know them personally. Um, so that's why I avoided it. I remember that now. And then also there's a pig one that says hugs and kisses, which again, you know, doesn't really make sense for what I'm using my cards for. So if you have reasons to do that, like if you're sending these to a child in your life that you know personally, then maybe you would want to use those. Um, I found I had a big strip of the bandana reddish paper here, and that was because I only cut up one of them. I remember now that I only cut up one of them into a three by three. Um, that was actually one of my, I don't know, I really, really loved this pattern paper. I think that's part of the reason I was able to make so many cards, like I said, 34 cards out of one six by six pattern paper, some black card stock and a sticker sheet. There was very little, and you know, I mean, I added some twine, but again, I added a stamp set. You wouldn't need those things. You could create most of those cards and just leave those thing, extra things out. But the reason I think I was able to make so much with it is just that there were just adorable patterns constantly, you know, like everything was really fun. I thought these would be just absolutely awesome cards for kids and every pattern paper just kind of made sense you know there wasn't any sort of random ones there wasn't any difficult ones to match and I just really enjoyed this whole collection here as I'm getting towards the end and I kind of have more limited choices I am kind of adding more um in like this time I'm layering so you know I wanted to use the red and red but it's not really making sense because the red's just blending into the red so then I tried the black layer but there's black behind the red so I had to add the white layer in um and, you know as you're getting towards the bottom I would suggest trying out things like that just sort of adding extra layers and it's funny because I say like I'm getting towards the end but there's still quite a bit left in the video and that's because we'll slowly get more towards um the 
the cards that are more individual or the cards that require a little bit more creativity. I wanted to continue to use up my black twine. I don't know, again, if you noticed, but I'm on like my third pack of black twine at this point because that's just how much black and white twine I've like randomly picked up over the years. There was a spool of it. And then that little, um, what do you call those? Like embroidery floss wraps. You know, there was just, there were several of these. And that's why I wasn't afraid to use my black and white twine because clearly I have plenty of it. I have, you know, you see off there to the side, I said, you know, I was trying to avoid having a giant pile of scraps, but it's almost inevitable. So I've used a ton of them so far. You've seen that, like the strips of here and there and all that, but there's still a bunch and there's going to be two of most of them because there was two of most pattern papers and I made two of each card. So they're cut the same way. I like making two of each card. I know some people don't really prefer that because they send cards to like you know, just the people they know. And so having two of the same card isn't you know, as appealing. They don't want two people to get the same card. But with these six by six pattern papers, if your goal is to use them up, ha- making two of each makes that a lot easier. You don't have to think of 34 unique ideas. But also when you come up with an idea, you get two cards out of it. And the same thing with your scraps. If I come up with a way to use the scraps, I get to use both sets of the scraps. And that makes the using up a six by six paper pad much more reasonable. So here again, I said, you know, I'm kind of incorporating extra little things. And this time, what I mean is a paper punch where I'm rounding the corners. I know a lot of people have a corner rounder. And so that isn't really adding too much. And you wouldn't, again, you wouldn't have to do that. This card would still look great without rounding the corners. So I feel like I'm kind of still sticking to that goal of not using too many supplies or not making card making too expensive because you don't need those things, but they do add some interest to it. And, you know, they're relatively widely available and inexpensive black card stock, twine, corner rounder, etc. Once I had the strips arranged in a way that I liked, I decided to incorporate the sentiment. As you can see, I'm again using three strips because again, that rule of odds. Um, Sorry that I'm being a little bit repetitive. Sometimes it just kind of happens with these longer videos. Um, That rule of odds, I've used three pattern strips. If I used four, it probably would have looked kind of awkward. Also, I'm covering about two thirds of the card. And that again applies... um, uses that rule of thirds. Like if you put something, um, if you imagine your card as a grid broken into three columns and three rows, if you put your focal elements or your things you want people to focus on at the intersections of those um, grid lines or within some of those grids, like if you, you know, you imagine that visual grid, and incorporate elements with that grid in mind, putting them at the intersections of the grids or keeping them within the grids, that can generally be visually appealing because of the way that our eyes are drawn to things. So that just kind of explains like why am I choosing to only fill a certain portion of the background. I have some strips, so again, I'm just kind of pulling in what I have. I had a little blue bandana. I had little pieces of um, this cow paper left. And again, I'm using three, two pieces of cow and then one bandana, and I'm overlapping them. Um, Oh, you know what I think I realized here is like, one, I needed another pop of color. So that's why I pulled in the red because I felt like they were a little bit... um, not drawn together yet but also then now there's five pieces in all but also with the yeah I don't know I'm I'm just making stuff up here I want to be honest with you I recorded slash made this video made all these cards way over a month ago at this point and then the end of school happened and because I don't know most of you know that I'm a teacher and the end of the school year just kind of like consumes because there's just so much extra to do I never got around to recording this video, so I'm sorry if it's a little bit discombobulated or blabbing. I probably should have speeded up this section of the video too because you don't need to see me like mess around with paper for five minutes. 
Although what I do want to say about it is that I think it shows you that part of the process of using up scraps is literally just kind of laying them together until you kind of come up with something you like. And so then I did wind up with uh, with odds there. There were four pieces of paper underneath the goat. So that was five. But, you know, again, rules are meant to be broken. There were a lot of the chicken pieces and a lot of red still. So that worked perfectly together because the chicken pieces had the red. And here I sort of put them into the center, again, using three because that's visually appealing, taking up um, a centering things also obviously tends to look pretty good. But if you center things and then put another piece kind of off center, that also, you know, when the piece that's off center stands out and so it draws your attention. So that's something to consider too. You don't always have to do it, but there's another way. Um, but again, centering things like your eyes naturally go to the center. And if you continue to focus things in on the center, it'll look good. Um, but again, have that better quality card base if you're leaving all that extra there. And I use the corner punch to just round things off and make them look a little bit more finished. I'm also trying to focus in on incorporating as many of the stickers as I can at this point. So there was that little chicken coop sticker. Um, and here I'm kind of just showing you what I have left. I have made all 32 of the cards, or 34, and I'm just kind of flipping through them quickly. I showed you there was very, very little. There was a couple stickers, a couple scraps of pattern paper. I mean, at that point, if you want to try to go for it and make another card, good on you, but I get to a point where I'm okay with just tossing the rest in the recycling bin or um, taking the stickers and giving them to the kids at school so that they can use up the little tiny ones that I didn't use, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there is a coordinating blog post, as I mentioned, you know, probably more than once, where you can um, look at the pictures of the cards in a sort of still fashion, get a little bit more of the detail of them. I'll try to incorporate some measurements into the post so that it's helpful. You can also um, reach me there to leave comments or here in the video description asking any questions that you have. I will leave you links to my card drive resources too so you can find out where to donate your cards so you can get those farm jokes because those are now available. You can just print them off and Thank you so much for watching and taking, this is a long time to stay with me and I really appreciate your time. I hope that you found some of this interesting, inspiring, helpful. If you could give this video a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. It helps my channel grow and subscribe if you want to see more. It's not the only thing I do on my channel. I do lots of other videos too, but if you like the six by six paper pad tutorials, then you'll get a, a lot of them here on my channel. I have a few more doodle bug pads waiting in the wings to share with you, as well as a 10 cards, one kit video coming up soon. I appreciate your time. There'll be some links in the video description too for the products. Probably already have this paper pad at this point though. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.